Think twice about the New Ager saying, just follow your heart. Or I've also heard on Christian platforms, people say things like invite Jesus into your heart. Now, Jesus never said that. Jesus never said that. Let's talk about what he did say. 31 times, Jesus says, follow me. He did not say, invite me into your heart. Why? Well, when you do a one word study, which you guys, if you watch my videos, you know I do every day. And today's study uh, was on, as one of the words, heart. Now, <clears throat> you actually, if you read that study on the word heart, you will be shocked about what it does say in 765 verses. Now, of course, I did not read all of them, but let me point out what you may find shocking about the heart of us humans. Starting way back in the beginning, Genesis, we read right from the get-go, Genesis 6, 5. And God saw that wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Now, that is us, all right? We are those people in the days of Noah, all right? We are the last generation. So that means that is us. Collectively, as humans, our heart, the imaginations in our heart is only evil continually. So what does Jesus say about heart? Well, let's read Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. So you take up Jesus's yoke and you learn of his teachings. For there is no, there's no pride in his heart. He's meek and lowly. Now, what we are told to do, okay, we are to seek with all of our heart and soul. Let's read Deuteronomy 4.29. But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him. And if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. <clears throat> so to seek God with your heart, actually, what does that mean? It means to deny all of your fleshly desires. Now I did read all 22 verses with the word deny. And the one that I wanna read for you is Matthew 16, 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Follow me again, 31 verses. I read all 31 verses. So now, this video really is for the Laodicean. And if you don't know what a Laodicean is, it means that you're neither hot or cold for Jesus. You're not, you're not on fire. You like to throw the word God around. You say you believe in God or you believe in Jesus, but you don't believe in his word, or at least you're not willing to follow his word. You're not, you, you, you can say the word God and Jesus, you can throw that around in your conversations, but if you're not in the actual word of God, if your heart isn't full of the word of God, if you don't have scripture running throughout your veins, if you're not taking the Bible literally, well, let's read 2 Timothy you know, let's read what Paul wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy 2.12. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. That is your standard Christian today. Have hands down. All right, that is 99% of all Christians today, period. They go to church on Sunday. They sing their songs to their rock and roll music. They hold their hands in the air. And they think they're full of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> I, I hope it works out for you, Laodiceans. I really do. And I make these videos mostly with the Laodicean in mind. Because I know I'm not going to convert those hard-hearted and seared consciousness and itchy ears 
All of the false prophets today have, have those people. I'm looking for the one that's on the fence. Uh, do I really want to get in the word of God? Do I really want to deny myself pleasures of the flesh, pleasures of this life? Do I really want to not live in this world like the culture of this world? That's who I'm speaking to. I'm trying to say one soul. That's it. One soul. All right. Well, let's look what Paul, you know, Paul understood Titus in a way that he chose Paul chose Titus to go into Crete. And you really have to you really have to read about the Cretans and understand the Cretans and why Titus was chosen to go there. I've done that in other videos. That's not for today's video, but let me just read you what <laughs> it's funny because I understand Titus and I understand the world of the Cretans. I did a huge history study on all of that. But all right, let's go with Titus 116. Really read all of Titus 1 if you if you want to understand. You, who who our culture is today, who we are us people today all over planet Earth. If you want to understand us as we are in the days of Noah, understand what the Cretans are. Go read about the Cretans you know, over, over 2,000 years ago. Understand who Titus is and why he was chosen. All right, Titus 1.16, they, prof they profess that they know God. But in works, they deny him, being abominable and disobedient unto every good work reprobate. If you don't think that's the Christian or that's the church today, you're, you're, you're in denial. <clears throat> Go do a one-word study on deny, denial, denied. Titus 1 is a good understanding. The Cretes are the same as the Laodicean today. They have no understanding of what vain talkers mean. They throw out God, they use his name, but extremely in vain. For they are not a student of the word. They just think they know who he is and how their end results will get them to heaven. Because they simply believe there is a God. But without his word, it will get them, it will get them. There is um, a discussion I had. Right, I had a discussion, found myself in a discussion with one of my guides. Stopped by to get a paycheck, and a discussion just kind of broke out. <clears throat> He's a new ager. And so I listened, right? I listened quietly, and all I could think of was Solomon. You know, as, as he's going on and on about his thoughts and his belief, and I'm just saying, vanities of vanities. Vanity, I'm, I'm, I'm really... I'm putting myself in Solomon's position and I'm walking around my, my little kingdom there and it's like vanities of vanities. But really, I'm also thinking about Proverbs, right? I mean, you have the vanities of vanities of Ecclesiastes, but I tend to go more towards Solomon's writings as the Proverbs. So, but I was also thinking about Paul's letter to Titus, who was, again, the only man that could go to the Cretes. So, let me read Titus 1. Again, read all of Titus. But in Titus 1, it really sums up who we are today. I'm going to read Titus 1, 10 through 11 now. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. That just means the Jewish population. Whose mouths must be stopped. Who subvert whole houses, teaching things they ought not. For filthy lucre's sake. Now, when I read this for me, because I live in a New Age Mecca, and weekly, I am not kidding you, weekly, in season, of course, <clears throat> but we're in season now. It's April. We're in season. It starts March, April, May, and then it'll come back around in September and October. But this is what goes on in Sedona. Weekly, we have these New Age uh, conferences called Ascension of some BS like that. And or we have the UFO conferences. That's coming up, I think, in a week or two or whatever. All right, these conferences bring in a thousand people each weekend. A thousand. Fill up the hotel rooms. Fill him, create all the traffic problems. These conferences is exactly what Titus 1, 10, and 11 is talking about. Let me reread re -read verse 11. Whose mouths must be stopped. These new age teachers, these UFO so-called experts 
who subvert whole houses, teaching things they which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake, for money. For money, they teach you a bunch of lies. It sounds good. It's all love, light, and high vibration. They entertain you with vain nonsense that will only get them, in this life, demon-possessed. But see, these people don't understand that as they sit in these conferences, they're, they're, they're an open portal, that any demon or a legion, which would be 6,000, that any demon, which is now called seductive spirits, that's what they're doing. They're seducing you for money. The you know, people putting on the conferences, they just want your money. And they're giving you seductive, charismatic speakers that have the spirit of the Antichrist in them. Why do I say that? Because they're distracting. They, they're, they're not talking about the word of God. They're giving you zero Bible verses. They're giving you what your vanity, what your itchy ears, what your seer consciousness, right? With your heart and heart, that's what they're feeding. You know, I pray the blood of the lamb over the places that's holding his venues, but that's all I can do. Now, what's going to happen as you attend these conferences is your life's going to begin to go downhill. It's going to be a train wreck. You're going to begin to unravel. And as you're unraveling in this lifetime, you're headed towards eternal misery and suffering because our hearts collectively as humans are only evil continually. Now, they don't call it evil. Again, they call it loving space, brother. They call it 5D ascension. Oh, and by the way, if your life's unraveling, that's okay. It's just ascension symptoms. You'll be okay. It's going to be all love, light, and high vibes. The med beds are coming. Space Brother's going to rescue you. All right, this is the Laodicean today. And Jesus will spit you out. He promises you that. Jesus promised you in Revelation 3.16, So because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Even better, my favorite, my go-to all the time on many videos is, of course, Matthew 7, 20 to 23. Because you talk about the pastors today, uh, oh, they call themselves prophets, they call themselves apostles, they, they're, they're vain talkers. It'll be them. You know, they're, they're worth over $100 million. They've got, you know, over 100,000 followers. And, and followers out there on these people? You'll be standing behind them as God says this, Matthew 7, 20 to 23. Wherefore, by their fruits, you shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into my kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Why would anybody want to go to a pastor or a prophet or any person that is prophesying in his name? Or casting out devils in his name? Or doing many wonderful works in his name? Why, why would you want to follow that? You're going to be with them in the lake of fire. So why are you following it? Because you don't know the word of God. That's not what you're studying. You're listening to the vanity of men or the vanity of women instead of reading the Word of God. That's why I do these videos. You may not have time to read the Word of God, so I'm, I'm, I'm giving it to you here. right? I'm not. It's not storytelling hour on my part. I'm just reading you straight from the King James Bible. I'm just giving you shooting straight from the hip and telling you how it is. So what else should we think twice about? Right? That's the name of the video, Think Twice. To me... The Laodicean church teaches today is that Jesus wants you to be happy and prosperous. Oh, the prosperity teaching. I mean, Joel Osteen, he teaches prosperity. He's worth over a hundred million dollars. <laughs> what, 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 what are we not getting about this collect, collectively? But you'll have all these pastors talking about the wealth transfer. All of the money that's coming to you. Do you think Jesus wants you to be you know, prosperous with a big, nice home, 
a new car in the driveway. Now, this may be just me, but I'm willing to bet Jesus would rather see us riding on donkeys like he did over that new car. We got to get rid of this stupidity of prosperity teaching and get back to the word of God. I mean, what, are we just going to throw the Beatitudes out the window? Seriously. Jesus taught us in the Beatitudes. Is that just, you know, uh, what, not to be taken seriously? Well, I take it seriously. And I'm going to read them to you. In case you don't know what the Beatitudes are, I'm going to read some of them. Matthew 5, 3 to 13. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. <clears throat> Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savior, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Those of us who love the word of God, who study it daily, we will be persecuted. We will be trodden, right? We are going to be reviled, all manner of evil sayings will come against us for the sake of Jesus. Those of us who knows he's not fluffy Jesus, all right? There's nothing fluffy about him. We are not all gods. We are not going to become creator gods. That's fluffy new age BS, and you got to get away from it. What is Jesus? He will rule with a rod of iron. Revelation nineteen fifteen, And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. Now let's not take lightly the wrath of Almighty God headed our way in this generation. Now there are 194 verses with the word wrath. I went through, and I chose to read to you, I should say, remind you of Zephaniah 1, let's read 15 to 18. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers, and I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord and their blood shall be poured out as dust and their flesh as the dung. Neither their money, listen to this, neither their silver nor their gold shall, shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy for he shall make even a speedy riddance of all of them that dwell in the land. So all of this foolish nonsense about prosperity teaching, it's not going to save you from the wrath, the fire of God. Now, what does Isaiah tell us about this? Isaiah will tell us that actual people is going to be the fuel for the fire. Let me read to you Isaiah 919 on this. Through the wrath of the Lord of hosts is the land darkened and the people shall be as the fuel of the fire. No man shall spare his brother. The word of God is always going to offend people. All right, 
We called them, I think it was it Robert Peck, way back in the 90s, wrote a book called People of the Lie. That's kind of who I'm talking about. I'm thinking about that when I say people of the lie. People who do not think it's relevant today, people who think they're foolish belief systems and their vain counsel and their worldview and their vegan community and your ascension into 5D community and your UFO community. You get my drift, right? Where I'm going with this. How the word of God will always offend. And how dare you say, I can't have sex with who I want, where I want. How dare you say how I worship and to who I worship or who God is to me. How dare you say I will end up in an eternal lake of fire. It's my life and I will do what I want. Oh, that's the attitude. I'm giving you an understanding of today's people, collectively humans. This is the mindset. This is the culture. This is the attitude. And it's 99% of all people on the planet, period. All right. I'm just letting you know, God knows your end from the foundation of the world, and he will let you offend him. He will let you use his name in vain. Lastly, let me remind you of what Jesus said. And this is, you really need to think twice on and probably even a third time, even a third time, because if there was ever a verse to truly make you angry and to shake your fist toward God, it's going to be found in Luke 14. Now, before I get to the really bad verse that you, that you want to ignore, that you want to rip out of your Bible, you want to take a black marker through, before I get to that verse, let me first read to you. Luke 14, 11 to 14. Luke 14, 11 to 14. For whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Then said he also to him that bade him, When thou makest a dinner or a supper, do not call your friends, nor thy brethren, neither thy kinsmen, nor thy rich neighbors, lest they also bid thee again, and a recompense be made thee. But when thou make a feast, call the poor, call the maimed, the lame, and the blind, and thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee, for thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. Are we doing that? Are we, are we making dinner and holiday dinners? For our family and our friends? Or are we making big holiday dinners and going outside and finding the poor, the maimed, the blind, the lame? Is that who we're feasting with? Are we just ignoring that verse? All right. If you don't like that part, huh, let's go further down in Luke 14. Let's look at verse 26 and 27. You ready for this? You're probably going to want to cover you. You're not going to like this. The Laodiceans refused to read it. Here we go. Luke 14, verse 26. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. So, now I ask you, do we hate our mom and dad, wife and children, brethren and sisters, and especially our own life? If we do not, Jesus says we cannot be his disciple. Now this is meant as a message that carries a lot of weight. For Jesus does not mean hate. For we know the Bible commands us to honor thy father and thy mother. It's a commandment. And loving and bringing up of our kids is our honor to do so. Really, it is meant. What's meant here is this is exactly the choice many new believers must make. Faith in Christ or participation in their family. Rejection and persecution from culture are often or will be. A part of following Jesus, the definition of a disciple of Christ is one who 
prioritizes Jesus first and fully more than anything else. We follow what today's generation will most likely, uh, I should say, today's generation collectively will follow uh, what we're told, what Paul tells us about to the Romans. As I read Romans 1, 21 to 32, I am giving you a description of today's generation. So just understand when you read Romans 1, you should read that every day. And remind yourself, we are all in this generation in the days of Noah. And this generation, Paul is telling the Romans, I guess I would say, their actions and their behaviors and the lack of their discipleship. Romans, let's wrap this up with Romans 1, 21 and 32. Because what's going on here, <clears throat> today's generation will not be able to give up what Paul is saying to give up. Paul is giving very clear definition on what not to do with your life if you want to be a disciple of Jesus. He really didn't leave anything out on this, so let's read it. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not... As God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. This would be your New Age teachers and your pastors and your self-proclaimed prophets. And they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, to birds, four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Now, I know a lot of people out there don't understand what that means. It means idolatry. If in your house you have a collection of anything, birds, people, creeping things, whatever, whatever. I don't know why you would have that collection, but okay. People do. They're called witches and warlocks, whatever. Uh, they're, it's idolatry. You're not, you're not to collect anything. You're not to have more than two or three images of anything. All right, verse 24. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness, through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Do you understand what that means? It means same-sex partners, and it means masturbation. Who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the, cre the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Do you know what that means? That would be Gaia, Mother Earth BS, tree huggers, and so on. Verse 26, for this cause, God gave them up into vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. What is that? Same sex and trans. Again, about the men, 27, and likewise also the men. Leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meant. That means that your reward, if you're not understanding what that means, living, uh, having same sex partners, your reward is in this world and there is no eternal peace for you. There is an eternal lake of fire, suffering and misery. You really should listen to somebody who's had a near-death experience and went to hell. You, you should listen to that. You should go online. If you're going to use social media, go listen to that. Let's wrap it up with verse 28 to 32. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind, evil mind, to do those things which are not convenient. The, uh, the, the entire Bible is an in inconvenient truth. That's what that boils down to. That's why there's Laodiceans. They, they don't like the inconvenient truth of the Bible. They, they, don't, they don't want, okay, God's word is inconvenient. It's, it's going to strip you of your fleshly desires. You're going to have to deny yourself and everything that you want in this world and bear the cross and follow Jesus. You're either, you're either a follower and a believer in the word of God, which is inconvenient. Finish up here. Verse 29, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, in case you don't know what that means, it's sex, wickedness, 
covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, ma malignity, whisperers. What is a whisperer? It means gossip. It means vain, idle conversations that have nothing to do with the word of God. Verse 30, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Think twice about that, potter out.